God. Praise to the Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to the Alpha and Omega. Praise to the Lamb of God Amen. who came and crucified on the cross for the sin of mankind. Praise to the one who made us right with God. Praise to the one who cared and concerned for old, for young, for Jew, for Gentile, for black, for white, for men and women. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ who came for whole world and for everyone. Bible tells us Lord Jesus Christ died for men and women, for Jew and Gentiles. Yet, it speaks Columbus here from Islamic Dawatim who goes against their own scripture yes, and yes. butcher the Christian scripture by stating Jesus was only for Jew. Today, we want to ask the question, whom Jesus came for? Is it correct that Jesus came for young and old, for black and for white, for Jew and Gentile, for everyone, everyone? Or is Jesus came only for limited people groups? So question is, did Jesus come only for the Jews? Muslims are always telling us Jesus came only for the Jews based on a few verses in the Gospels. Is this a distortion? Are they rightly understanding those passages? Because it is true that Jesus said that he came only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But he also said that he had other sheep and had other sheepfolds and it needs must that I go to my other sheep and other sheepfolds. So already we're questioning the use of these verses by Muslims. And furthermore, Jesus said his last instructions after he had been resurrected, immediately before he ascended, he said to his disciples, his last instruction, he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he also said, you shall be my witnesses in all the earth. Let me, let me just read the passage. So, we are talking Matthew chapter 28. When they saw him, they worshipped him. They worshipped Jesus. But some daughters, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority, all authority in heaven and on earth has given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit. Sorry, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of, of the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. So the verse clearly doesn't tell us, go and teach the Samaritans. Go and teach to Jews only. Go and teach to Romans only. Go and teach Brits only. First tells us, go and teach all nations. And Jesus meant when he said all nations. That included every nation. All, all nations. And we can add to that also Acts 1.8 which says, you shall be my witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the earth. These were Jesus' last instructions. So I ask you, did Jesus only come for the Jews? According to the Bible, 
Jesus did not come only for Jews. Jesus came for whole mankind. When it said whole nation, all nation, Jesus meant it. We had disciples of Jesus who were not Jews. We had only followers of Jesus, Jesus who were not Jews. Jesus came for whole nation. So how do we reconcile what Jesus said about coming for the lost sheep of the house of Israel and these statements to go into all the world? In Let me read that verse as well, brother. 1-8, Acts 1-8. He came for all the house of Israel. Okay. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. These are the first instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples in the first missionary journey, sending them out into the local villages of Galilee. These were the first instructions. These were their training. So, Matthew chapter 10. This 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost ship of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons freely. You have received freely, you give. Since we're in this passage, let's go to verse 18. Verse 18. Will you read verse so, 18 for verse us? Verse 5 tells them, go only to the Jews. Okay? I read it from verse 16. I am sending you out like sheep among the wolves. Therefore, be as straight as snake and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before the governors and the kings as witness to them and to the Gentiles. So verse is simply telling us, as you are witness to Gentiles, watch out. So Jesus is already in that same passage envisaging the Jews going out and making testimony of Jesus to Gentiles. And does he stop them? These are his very words. And so he's giving them instructions concerning how they should deal with Gentiles. You know, these things are very easily reconciled. Our question to Muslims is, why do you even ask this question? Did Jesus come to the Jews only? Because if you knew your own Quran, if you read your Quran, this is not something you would even ask. So first we're going to the, go to the Quran and show you that Jesus did not come only for the Jews. So we'll go to the Quran now. Even though the Quran gives us the wrong image of Jesus, yet it gets the certain things correct. Such as Jesus came for all mankind. Surah 21, verse 91. And one of, one of who guarded her trusted it, we believe into her through our spirit. And we made her and her son sign to the world. Not sign to the Jews, not sign to the Gentiles, not sign to the Muslims, but sign to the whole world. Jesus is according to the Quran, is sign exactly. to the whole world. Jesus came for whole world. According and also, they've got same thing in Surah 19. Would you like to read it? 
21. He says this, your Lord says, it is easy for me. And we will make him a sign to the people. Sign to the people. Not sign to the certain groups or certain tribes, but sign to the people. And mercy from us. Surah 19, verse 21. So Quran confirms Jesus is for whole world, not only for certain people group or for certain tribes. So why are Muslims saying that Jesus only came for the Jews when it says in their own Quran that he came for all mankind? Do you allow me to answer your question? Go on. Jesus peace upon him speech and he said only the Salashi of Israel. He commanded his apostle, you don't go among the Gentile or Samaritan. You rather go to the lost sheep of Israel. The thing he comes to the lost sheep of Israel only. And to confirm more, when the Canadian woman she approached him to heal her daughter, he refused at the beginning, then she insists, then at the end he said, he said, your uh, your wish is granted. Come back to you. Thank you. Stay here. Thank you very much. So the Quran says that Jesus came as a sign and a mercy to all mankind. Amen. Amen. He came for everybody. And in that verse, Surah 2191, the sign is somehow associated with Jesus' mother. And when I read about a sign and his mother, I think to myself, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, where it says, And this shall be a sign, a virgin shall bear forth a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel, that is God with us. So when I read this in the Quran, I'm thinking that this one, this Jesus, was the one who came of a virgin, and this is the sign that goes yeah. to all the world. Yeah. So it is not only my, my question. It is not only when we read not this, to me. but Allah knows. That is in Arabic, Allah uses certain terms for Jewish people, for people of the book. But when Allah says Jesus is sign to the world, that's what Allah means. Allah, Allah could say Jesus is only sign to the Jews. Allah could say Jesus is only the sign to the people of the book. Allah could say Jesus is only the sign people who live in the area of Jerusalem. But Allah said Jesus is sign to the world. And Allah Amen. meant that. Allah meant that. Today, Islam is Dawatim. Once again, goes against their Quran and limited Allah. Put Allah in a box and tells us, sorry guys, Allah once again couldn't communicate what he meant. Shame on you. Allah said, Jesus is for whole world. For God so love the world. And amazing thing is, Bible also tells us Jesus is for whole world. When you contradict Jesus saying, who are So you? now we're going to go who to the are, Old who, Testament. How we're do going you give to the, the book of Genesis. When, when clearly Jesus Genesis keeps on. And we're going to read to Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. What he's saying. Genesis you are a liar and three. hypocrite. It is, I will bless those who bless you. It is Muhammad's message. It is Muhammad's message. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. All the people on earth will be blessed through you. My friend, no. You. you can speak to us afterwards. No. Uh, can you, My can friend. You get down? When you talk about Islam, when you talk about Islam, you go and have your own 
Shut up. You have your when you own. talk about Islam, you have your when you own. talk about Islam, you have, you have a Muslim. You have, you have a Muslim here. You have a no, no, no. You have a Muslim here. Who can speak? Nothing to do with you. You, you keep quiet. You keep quiet. You keep quiet. So in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis, three, it says out of Abraham, out, out of Abraham's Abraham seed, all the families of the earth would be blessed. Yes. Out of Abraham, yes. all the families of the world would be blessed. And now if you go from Genesis chapter 12 and go to Genesis chapter 26, you find that the same promise is passed on to his son, Abraham, Isaac. Isaac. Jacob, Amen. Abraham, Amen. Isaac, Amen. Jacob. Amen. Listen yes. carefully. On the list, yes. Ishmael is not even on the list. Yes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob. Yes. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yes. What about Ishmael? Yes. Why don't? No, yeah, Ishmael. No, what's wrong with Ishmael? No, 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 no. What, what's wrong with Ishmael? You shut up. He, you be quiet. You mean from Genesis chapter twenty-eight? Shut you shut up. up. You shut and the up. promise to yes. Jacob. Uh, uh, why don't you, why don't you tell us about Ishmael? Thirteen to what? fifteen. Did, didn't Genesis God promise Abraham all his descendants will be blessed? Shall I read it? So, twenty-eight. Abraham being promised by God, all his descendants will be blessed, included Ishmael. Included I am the Lord your God. But they are. They are no. deceiver, liar. They that are lying my about friend. their own scripture. No, no, my friend, you shut you, up. My friend, you shut up. My friend, my friend, my friend. You shut up. I didn't say Quran. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. talking about your wicked Bible. Let me just read the verse. Quran is talking about the Bible. Stop the Lord. No, no sense. No sense. You are lying. You are lying, and you know you are lying. I can, I can show you the I word. will no, give you no, no, no. and your descendant the land on which you are lying. Which version your of the Bible you are uh, 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 like dust talking about now? Okay. Which version? Because you have over 250 versions of the, the, the Bible. No, we are going no, no, back I'm going to interrupt. The no. We are going so, back to the All the people on earth will be blessed through you and your of your offspring. Okay. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. So the blessing of Abraham passes to his son Isaac, passes to Jacob, and the promise is that from Jacob and all his seed, his offspring, Jacob's offering, the, he would bless all the families of the earth. This is where the prophetic line in the Bible is. When we go from the seed of Jacob, we end up with David. We end up with David. Argue, just argue. And the fourth son of Jacob is Judah. Upon Judah is promised rulership, prophetically, a king. This is 49 verse 10. Exactly. So now we go to Second Samuel chapter 7 and find out where the rulership rests. So that's very long passage. I'm not going to read all of it. That's Second Samuel. Verse 13 and verse 16. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 13 and verse 16. He is one who will build a house for my name. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Forever, verse 13. I will be his father. And he shall be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of man, with flogging inflicted by man. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever. Forever. So the promise is, out of David will come this kingdom through his sons, but it will be established forever, three times forever, forever. And who is the son of David? It's all through the Gospels, 
through Acts, through the epistles, the son of David is none other than Jesus himself. And it is his kingdom that will be established forever. Uh, you said Jesus, son of David? We know that he, he's not the Jesus son of David. Jesus also identified the son of David, whom the throne is blown, whom everyone is going to worship, every tongue, every tongue will confess one day that Jesus Christ is, is Lord. Lord. Every tribe will confess and bow down to Lord Jesus Christ, who came in the lineage of David, who is also called Son. Why don't you and it's no coincidence my father and your father that in my Acts Lord chapter and two your and Lord. Acts chapter three so Lord, have these Lord. two covenants are mentioned the covenant to Abraham in whom all the families of the earth would be blessed and the covenant of David that he would be established his throne would be established forever. Yeah, now, where is his throne? As we look at this covenant, we see all oh, our dear Muslim friends, Muhammad and Islam has nothing to do with this covenant. Muhammad and Islam has not even one millimeter to play role in you this covenant. You want to talk about Muhammad this and Islam, covenant, you talk about with me. You talk with me. Look at me. You're a liar. You're a deceiver. Look at me and talk to me when you talk about Islam. This is don't, don't, don't talk about Islam because it's not your religion. Because, because she needs to talk to me. Because she needs to talk to me. I'm talking to her because she's talking to her. No, you talk to me after I finish with her. I want to talk to her. No, no, no. Stay away. I want to talk to her. As long as she, I am aggressive because she needs. Because she does that. Okay, she having there. established. Speak the man, come, come down. We are, we are equal, men or women. Yes, yes. Where are you going? That's from my ear. Because she's talking about this I don't because want to talk to you. Let's continue. I love women. Okay, so we have established the Abrahamic covenant and we have established the Davidic covenant that comes down to Messiah. Now we're going back to the Quran. But remember, we have established that the promise is through Abraham, through Isaac, and through Jacob. So now we go back to the Quran and we go to Surah 45, 16. Remember, Surah 21, 91, Surah 19, 21, that the, Jesus would be a sign and a mercy to all mankind. How is mercy of mankind? Hold that in your mind. Uh, uh, the Canadian woman, he didn't respond to her, and he, 45, and he said, I've been shot in the face. Don't tell don't, lies. Don't, don't tell lies. Liar. Don't lie. Don't don't tell lies. Don't tell the truth of the children. To the, 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 the dog. He called you dog. You are no, no more than dog like me. He is. Don't read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. No, no. Jesus. Jesus is racist. Jesus is the biggest racist. So this Torah, 45, 16, there are five points. Five points, and they concerned who? He knows. They concern the children of Israel. I say again, they concern the Jews, the offspring of Jacob. There are five things here. Number one. The children of Israel are a preferred people. They are a favored people. Please hear that. Number two, there is a pronouncement of particular blessing to the Jews, the children of Israel. Number three, 
With them. With them. We are the scriptures. With them are the scriptures. Number four. With them are the judgments. With them are the commandments. And number five. Most importantly, remember, we are asking, did Jesus come only for the Jews? Number five, the prophethood. The prophethood. The line of the prophets, according to the Quran, is in the line of the children of Israel with the Jews. So what we have here is... What we have why here is... Why is your Bible? Why are, why is in your Bible? Why are you in Isaiah, yes. he taught about Jesus a prophet in life to Gentiles. Prophet lied to Gentiles. You, 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 you ignore this no, of your Bible. No, I will go to Let me read the verse 29, Surah 29, verse 27. Listen to this. We are making a case. Where is the line of the prophets? Will you read, please? Let me tell you about and the line. And then they give Isaiah, him Isaac, 29, and Jacob, number and one Christ till 11. Descendants, Isaiah 42, and scripture. And they gave him his reward in this world. And indeed, he is the here after among the righteous. They gave him Isaac and Jacob. Isaac and Jacob. Did you hear Ishmael? No. Hear this. Did you hear Muhammad? No. Because you don't they want to hear it. Because you hate the truth. The because you are, are you are, you are degrading the as a prophet and messenger. The context you are of this God verse not is God. Abraham. Abraham, yes. And Abraham, are you follower of Abraham? Isaac None gives of you are circumcised. to Abraham, and Abraham his son Isaac, and God his son and Jacob. Yet you are circumcised, and you are go against it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Here's the bottom line. Yeah, you God. brought your letter here yeah. to engage probably, which we did not give permission. Yet you are here, not even listening what we are saying. And we're quoting from your Quran. Can you please, as you said, if you follow Abraham, you should be circumcised. Can I'm circumcised. Please, I am circumcised. Can you please confirm for us when did Muhammad even circumcise? Can you please engage All with the conversation? Conversation is Jesus the is Jew. for whole world the as Jew. the Quran claims. The no. Jew. Because I'm brother Muslim. is telling you it's something true. very important. Brother, continue. It's true and, ju uh, and Muslim and you can confirm this. Even Jesus in Surah 19, 49. So Surah 19, 49. The line of the prophets with the Jews. And it comes through Abraham, the first Hebrew, Isaac and Jacob, according to the Quran. Add that to the two surahs from Surah 91, Surah 21, and Surah 19. We see that the promise is that Jesus would be assigned to the whole world. The question is now, does the Quran have anything to say about the ancestry of Jesus? Does it? Well, if we go to Surah 66, Verse 12, we find out that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is of the family of Imran. She is called the daughter of Imran. Oops. So are you trying to tell me, while the Quran says Imran is the father of Mary, Mary is the daughter of Imran, are you telling me Virgin Mary was 1,400 years old? That's another topic. We'll deal with that topic another day. But here is one serious error in the Quran. I told you it was a test of faith. We've heard. Of faith. We've heard. She Regarding the ancestry of Jesus, we need to go to Surah 3, which is called the family of Imran. So we're going to Surah 3 now, the Quran, and establishing something about the ancestry of Jesus. 
33 to 36. I'm going to read it from verse 32. Say, obey Allah and the messenger. But if you turn away, then indeed Allah does not like the disbelievers. Indeed, Allah chose Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham and the family of Imran over the world. Whom did Allah chose? Family of Adam, Noah, family of Abraham, and family of Imran over the world. Descendants, some of them from others, and Allah is hearing and knowing. When, when the wife of Abraham said, My Lord, indeed, I have pledged to you what is in my womb. Con consent, so accept this from me. Indeed, you are hearing and the knowing. But when she delivered her, she said, My Lord, I have delivered a female. And Allah was most knowing of what she delivered. And the male is not like the female. And I have named her Mary. And I seek refuge for her in you and her descendants from Satan. Expel the expels from the mercy of Allah. So what we learn from this? We learn that Jesus is the grandson through Mary of Imran. Someone who lived 1,400 years before. Well, that's Mary. another problem, yes. Yeah. But we're going to go to Surah 333, where it says there is special um, favor upon Noah, the individual, Adam, and two families, the family of Abraham and the family of Imran. Now, this is the Quran. We don't believe the Quran, but we quote it to help Muslims understand the issues. So the family of Imran is a favored family. It has standing, it has position. And this is the family from which Jesus came. So even the Quran, in some very limited way, is putting favor upon the family of Jesus. So how... So Jesus is a human, he came from a Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus was truly man and truly God, man. That's the part you need to understand. How can they be both? How can, how can you have one face yet two eyes? How can you have one face with two eyes, man? Think that and then we will respond to that. If you don't understand my accent, please move to the different uh, level. So, as Quran makes a claim that Jesus came from all the as Quran makes a claim that the Jesus, family of Jesus, has been favored over the world. Now, let's see how we put them together. Remember the original question. The question arises from what will Muslims say? Did Jesus come only for the Jews? What have we seen? That the Quran itself says that Jesus will be a sign and a mercy to all mankind. We have seen that the line of the prophets comes out of the children of Israel. And the Quran goes on to say the line of the prophets is through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and his seed. And in them, the, the Bible says, all the families of the earth will be blessed. The fulfillment of this is in Jesus. He is the Messiah who alone can reign on David's throne forever because he ever lives. He is eternal. He is in heaven now and he's coming back to reign on a throne. And he alone is eternal. So the question is, 
how do we answer the, the issue of Jesus one time saying to his disciples, go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to the Canaanite woman, I've only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How do we reconcile that with the statements here in the Bible that Jesus came for all people? The evidence of this is so strong. I said that I walk away. The instructions of Jesus to the early disciples can easily be answered from within the text itself, and we already have. His disciples were told to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Where there is a kingdom, there is a king. A king on David's throne, and that is Jesus, the Messiah. And he gave instruction to all his disciples to go and share the good news to the end of the earth. The question is, when Jesus came, what if the Jews did not accept their own Messiah? What if when Jesus came, they didn't want the kind of Messiah that he offered? They had Rome over them. But they were more comfortable with living with Rome than returning to the God of their fathers, to Yahweh and coming back into relationship with God, in a covenant relationship where they could know God. In the end, they rejected that. They wanted to remain independent. Christ's kingdom, where he reigns, is a spiritual kingdom, but they wanted to keep an earthly kingdom, ruled by, not the Romans, but by somebody within the children of Israel. But their Messiah had come, and in the end, they rejected their Messiah. So initially, Jesus sent his disciples to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Where there's a king, there's a throne, and that throne belongs to Jesus. But, but, when they rejected their Messiah, and this is obvious in Matthew's Gospel, how progressively the door is closing. They, Jesus is offering the throne of David and for him to be Messiah. And they reject him and the door is closing. And as they reject him, Jesus rejects them. And you see at the end, in the cursing of the fig tree, in the cleansing of the temple, and in the prophetic denunciations of the religious establishment in Jerusalem, that he was rejecting them. And the kingdom was not on offer. Instead, he would have to go to the cross, and the gospel became the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ. But, understand this, the gospel of the kingdom of Christ's throne is only postponed. Jesus is coming back and at his second coming under very different circumstances the Jews will receive him and he will reign over them and Messiah's kingdom will be established. Do you want to say something? Let, let me just put it together. Here's the thing. Islamic Dawah makes speakers called on. Forget about Bible. Say, Forget about Islamic Dawah. Silly claims such as Jesus came only for Jews. They need to acknowledge that claim goes not only against the Bible, but it against also the Quran. goes against the Quran. He's the greatest commandment. Oh, Israel, the Lord Jesus our God Christ. is one. The Messiah. And you break the one the God, God and those three babies God. Who Father, God, Son, God, and the Holy Spirit, the vision which is fly over the Father and the Son. Is it not? How dare you? Brits and Scottish, Jews and Gentiles, male and female. Even the Quran gets lots of things wrong, but there are the couple of things Quran gets it right. Quran tells us. Jesus is for whole birth. It is Quran again tells us family of Jesus has a favor in the eyes of Allah. And that Jesus.
here's the thing. Jesus came to the Jews offering them the kingdom over which he would reign and be king. They rejected their Messiah. But the Jews were always to be a light to the Gentiles. They were to be a nation that was a light, a beacon, a banner to the nations. God's will in coming to the Jews and establishing the kingdom is they would be a light to the world. So Jesus came to Israel, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, in order to send them out as a nation to the people of the whole world. When they rejected their Messiah, it was up to his disciples, Jewish disciples, the original apostles, to carry the, the message of the gospel in Jesus Christ to the whole world. Not to go to San Martin and Genital. Why you ignore this? Why you ignore this? So we are summing up now. We can sum up the gospel. We can sum up the gospel in one verse. We hear it so often that we do not listen to it. What does it say? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. The world. He didn't so love the Jews only. For God sent his son to the he whole he world, to die. his he one and them. only son, them, but, that but he want to blast. whosoever, Your God is a whosoever, God. He want to blast. who is he whosoever, whosoever is everybody. Are you whosoever? Say it clearly. Yes, I'm a Gentile, whosoever. The gospel is for all of everybody. Every whosoever, the door is open. God sent his son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the next verse, verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world, the world, to condemn the world, but that through him the world not Israel, not the Jews, the world might be saved. My question. So as we question. wrap up, why God Jesus saved, came why God for the whole Abraham world the, the and the he Bernabu. offers you why God salvation saved, in his name, God, redemption, saved, eternal saved security today. And, he allowed his and we pray to die. he will use these words to honor his name and he will open hearts and may these words and the gospel presented to you. Be fruitful in your own hearts. Thank you for listening. God bless you.